So welcome. Uh, this is a quick video of an activation within Drew Yoga. Now, most Drew Yoga teachers will have their favorite activation components. This is mine. So I'm gonna talk you through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And then um, hopefully you can see, and by doing this experience, uh, the wonderful benefits of activations. So first of all, very quickly, why do we do activations? So one of the things that the activations do is, as their name implies, they activate different aspects of our bodies. Uh, so from a physical perspective, we're stimulating parts of our neurology, um, parts of our uh, body physically, like the um, spine and the joints and the muscles. Um, we're stimulating um, different energies in the body. Um, so there's all sorts of stimulations which um, will happen with the activation. And at a more general level, the, um, what happens with that is we are generally raising our energy. So within a yoga practice, the activation not only prepares us for going into our yoga practice, but in its own right, it is something that raises our life force energy and our energy in the body at a more general level. And this can actually make it very healing. So for some people who might be in a, maybe a kapha state, if you're into Ayurveda um, or Ayurveda, uh, Ayurvedic uh, medicine in some way, uh, and you understand what that means, you might need raising your energy up as something that will actually help to really balance you. So um, here we go. So we're gonna start with just some shaking movements. And I'm just gonna shake my ankle, try to make it as loose and relaxed and as floppy as I can, and then shake up into the knee. And then shake up into the hip. And it is designed that it will maybe challenge your balance a little bit. And this is known as writing reflexes. And writing reflexes are a survival mechanism. And we're going to the side and out to the back. Again, all designed to change the angles of the shaking, which challenges the balance, challenges the stimulation to the inner ear, which is the vestibular system. And it's all part of that survival mechanism called writing reflexes and then coming back. And we do the same on the other side. And it has been shown that this survival reflex, if it's not trained, you lose it. So it's just like any other skill in your body, uh, shaking up into the knee and the hip gradually. And we come out to the side. Now it has been shown with research that if you have very poor writing reflexes, you are greater risk of falling, um, particularly if you're elderly. And generally there's a greater risk of injury from general activities, daily activities that you might do. So it's really good to do this. And shaking also um, shakes off negative energies and it really gets the joints a little bit looser as well. So now we're working into the hands into the wrists and then into the elbows. Up into the shoulders. And so getting the looseness and the shaking through the joints isn't always an easy thing to do because we tend to get very tight in the joints, especially in the ankles. And so getting this shaking um, and practicing this is, is really helping to release and loosen up a little bit as well. So we're gonna bring the arms up in front, shaking through the elbows, the wrists and the shoulders, and then coming up higher than the head to whatever is comfortable. And then I'm gonna bring my feet a lot wider apart. And we're gonna do some body circles whilst we're shaking. So I'm gonna keep at least my hands shaking, maybe the elbows as well, as I turn to one side and make it a very soft circle by softening deeply into the knees and coming up on the other side. And we can do that a couple of times uh, and then we'll go the other way. So softening into the knees keeping some shaking going. Changing direction, this time with the legs straight, we come down and we feel a little bit of hamstring lengthening, maybe some other muscles that might be tight. You feel a little bit of releasing going on. Lovely, so we've done a few circles each way. And then I'm gonna bring the arms down, but out to the side. And then come back into the elbows and into the shoulders. And then try to get into the shoulder blades and the shoulder blades are an area that for some people really get locked up. And so trying to get that loosening and shaking into the shoulder blades might feel quite difficult and quite fatiguing quite quickly because the muscles are really, really tight sometimes. And then we can come down and then we can relax and come back into normal 
And if you just notice how you feel after that, there's a sense that my energy is buzzing. It's kind of like I've changed my state very quickly just with the shaking movements. So the second thing that I go into is cross patterning. And before I cross pattern, I touch same side knees. So this is something I got from Donna Eden, uh, who wrote a book called Energy Medicine. Uh, she was a kinesiologist before that. Um, and she took a lot of the kinesiology um, and understanding of energies and created a form of energy medicine, which is actually very popular. And one of the things she says about cross patterning is that you need to have your energy flowing in a forwards direction through the energy channels, the nadis, or in Chinese medicine, the meridians, before you cross pattern. Otherwise, you'll cross pattern and it will actually make you feel weak. It can make you feel, uh, some people, quite unwell. And so this is a movement that gets the energy flowing forward. And then we go into crossovers. And everyone that's done the Drew teacher training will have lots of patterns of crossovers. So this is my most familiar pattern. I'll go then into touching the foot or whatever you can reach. And we're starting to mobilize into the hips. And then we'll start to bring in a little sidestep. So these sidesteps start to move the head from side to side. And that stimulates the inner ear. So the inner ear is the vestibular system. And the vestibular system, when it's stimulated, drives a lot of stimulation into the midline of your cerebellum. So that's a part of your brain, which is all about movement. It's not only about movement, but predominantly that's what its role is. And one of the things that will happen when you stimulate the cerebellum is it will fire signals down into your spinal stabilizers. And that will help to activate your core and mean that you'll be able, better able to stabilize uh, in postures that might be coming up. So then I'm going to move into touching behind. And with the arm that you're not using, you could stretch upwards. And you could then play around with combinations, but I'm going to keep it simple today. And so we're stacking the stimulation of the inner ear with the cross patterning with mobilizations at the moment through the shoulders and the hips. And one of the things that happens with cross patterning is it gets the two hemispheres of your brain cross communicating in a much more strengthened way. And one of the things that will actually disrupt that is being in a fight or flight state. So doing cross patterning does help to bring you out of a fight or flight state. And um, that improved cross communication is very helpful to your movement and to your sense of energy and well-being. Many people um, within Donna Eden's work will often do cross patterning in the afternoon to help bring their energy levels back up and their focus. So we've done uh, some shaking movements. We've got the energy flowing in the right direction. We've done some cross patterning. There has been joints being mobilized through all of that. So now I'm gonna go through mobilizing the spine in all three planes of motion. So I'm gonna use my favorite three, the simple three as I call it. So the first one is to take the arms above the head, come forwards and then back up. Now at the moment I'm doing this quite slowly just so I can demonstrate it. So there's a nice big bend into the knees. It's up to you how far forward you go. So if you need to, you can make it as I'm gonna do now, very small. And I'm doing it relatively slowly, and some people might need to keep it slow, but if you're able to, you'd want to make it a little bit energized, a little bit on the brisk side with a bit of momentum. And this makes it more stimulating, because remember the idea of the activation, at least in the early parts, is to raise your energy and to get a little bit of stimulation. And this, again, because the head is moving forwards and back up, we're getting that huge stimulus into the inner ear and that vestibular system. And if you want to take it a step further, we can go from side to side. So the primary pattern of this is to go into flexion, which is when you come forwards and then extension as you come up. And then there is a little bit of a twist in there as well. So there, 
we have our first movement and there's a lot of shoulder movement in there as well. And you'll notice that when we were cross patterning, we had shoulder movements coming this way and this had shoulder movements this way. So although um, the primary objective might have been cross patterning or flexion extension of the spine, we are getting lots of other joints mobilized. In the cross patterning, we had a lot of mobilizations into the hips. And so that's the cleverness of how you put together your activations. So the second movement is a twisting movement. So with the feet anywhere from hip to shoulder distance apart, we just bring the feet out about 45 degrees. And we're gonna allow the arms just to swing around the body and land wherever they want to land. So we're just lifting the heel off on the back foot and allowing it to pivot. And if you allow your head just to look gently over the shoulder, you're gonna get a twist through the spine that goes from the neck right down into the sacral area. And it's that lifting of the heel and pivoting on that back foot that allows you to open up into the sacral area. And with the arms down by your side, you'll find that it's a very soothing twist. This is actually quite relaxing, which is a lovely thing to bring in as part of the activation. So it's got a little bit of energy to it, but it's soothing at the same time. And then we can bring one arm up over the shoulder. So you're kind of giving yourself that pat on the back and that well done for doing your activation. And you can notice how just changing one aspect of the twist changes how it feels. So I can feel now that it's not as soothing as relaxing, but I am getting this opening up in the shoulder blade area. And then if I bring both arms up, I get a different feeling again. So it's almost like the whole of the twist is in my shoulder blades and it's really focused into the upper torso, the thoracic spine. And then if I take my hands higher than the head, what's happening is when you take your hands higher than your shoulders, you have a reflex in your body that lengthens your spine. And that's called axial extension. And if you twist with that extension, it feels lovely and loose and twisting through the spine feels quite different. And then we can work our way back down and just come back to hands at shoulder height and notice how that feels. And then bring the arms all the way back down to the hips. Notice how that feels. And again, I'm back into feeling relaxed. And then we can just start to go down towards the floor. So we can just start to come lower into the knees. We can start to bend forwards. Uh, you might find that you're not gonna pivot so much on the ball of the feet, and you might be able to get right down to the floor. And some of you will go down into a squat more for this, and some of you might find that you're more bending over. So you can play with it. There's no exactness to some of these movements coming back up coming to a stop and that has really um, changed my state quite a lot. So although that was a twisting movement for the spine, there's a lot of opening up in the shoulder blades um, and, and the shoulders with that movement. And when we start to come down, there's quite a lot of subtle things that are going on in the hips and the knees and even into the ankles. So we've worked with flexion and extension, which is the sagittal plane. Uh, we've worked with the transverse plane with the twisting and then we want to work in the frontal plane so that we worked in all three planes of motion. So what we're going to do now is work in the frontal plane with a side to side movement. We're going to do scoops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by keeping the knee straight and I'm just going to lean to the side and scoop. And the reason I start with the knee straight is because you can really feel the emphasis into the side of the body when you keep the knee straight, at least initially. And what you can then do is as you're scooping with this hand, the other shoulder can draw up and around so you get these lovely big shoulder rotations as well as the side to side movement. And then if you bring the knees in as well, you get this little bit of softening and lowering and rising through the body, which stimulates the inner ear. And every time you get the head moving, you add that inner ear stimulation, which just adds to the brain stimulation, which 
makes a big difference. So even though the head was moving side to side, adding that extra component of the knees softening and rising makes it a more complex pattern. And so one of the things that we get with a lot of these activations is very complex patterns and complex flowing patterns um, which have a lot of brain stimulation and a lot of releasing through the joints and the spine. And in the terms of the side to side bend with the scoops, a gentle massaging of the kidneys as well. So this is why um, this particular um, activation has got all my favorite things in it. So that completes uh, the three parts to the tri-spinal release. Um, or at least the three planes of motion within the different um, uh, planes of motion that you can move the spine in. And in terms of a tri-spinal release, where you've got also the spine, the shoulder girdle and the pelvis, a lot of that's been, other aspects of the tri-spinal release have been mobilized and worked within, within what we've done. And sometimes I will go and do much more into the shoulders and into the pelvis. So what I tend to do now is go into some of the smaller joints and I'm going to stand on one foot and just circle the foot. Change direction, go the other way. So now we're going into small joints. Then I'm going to do into the knee joint. So a little kicking motion. And as I'm doing that, turn the foot inwards and outwards. And this brings again that balance into it. And now we're working knee and hip together. And then we bring the knee up to hip height and we rock side to side. So we're loosening into the spine. And this sequence is loosely based on something I uh, came across in a research study where, and now we go in circles with the lower leg, where they found a sequence not too dissimilar to this helped prevent falls in the elderly. And it was mainly because it was increasing the ability to stand on one leg and stabilize. It was mobilizing the joints on the other side and really stimulating the writing reflexes, that inner ear. And then we finish by circling the foot, but this time with the knee up high, changing direction, and then back down. And then we swap over. So we circle the foot, change direction. We do a very soft movement through the knee. So it's just a hinging through the knee. It's like a kicking motion, but there's no force in there. And then you try to turn the foot inwards and outwards with that motion and you'll find it's a combined hip and knee movement. And then we'll bring the knee up to hip height and go side to side. Just gently rocking into the hip. Put some circles into the lower leg. Now I've seen people include some of these motions within the shaking movements. So they're more for me mobilizations and they're mobilizations which get into the smaller joints rather than doing big movements. These are more isolated movements. And then we finish by circulating, by circling the foot again and change direction and then back down. And rather than going through similar things with the wrists, we're gonna go into the figure of eights because for me, the figure of eights starts to slow everything down, brings us into energy awareness, but there is a lot of very subtle movements through the wrists and elbows occurring with the figure of eights. So I'm gonna start by just getting the hands with a little rub. It's almost like I'm washing my hands into the wrists, fingers, anywhere it needs a bit of energy. So it could be that the hands feel cold in certain places. It could be that there's grippiness or sweatiness on the skin. These are areas where the energy may not be flowing as optimally as it might might be. So we get a bit of energy into the hands and then we pause. We bring the hands to the heart. We separate the hands to roughly the distance of the temples. And you can just touch your temples to get the distance and bring it back to your heart. And then you want to see if you can feel any energy between the hands. And for some people that's a really good thing for them. They can really connect with that kind of energy. And some people find that difficult. So if you're not connecting with anything between the hands very strongly or even at all, maybe try just noticing the space between the hands. And if that doesn't work, maybe just try to feel the hands themselves. So try to feel the 
hands, the fingers, maybe the bones and the joints of the hands and fingers and just see if that works. So one of those will probably be better for you and whichever one you feel you're drawn to and you get a better connection with, really tune into it. And then holding on to that, we're gonna create a figure of eight. And the figure of eight is like a number eight on its side. So it's an infinity symbol. And the idea is that you want the hands to always come up the center. So you're always drawing the energy up over the heart. And then you can start to take your figure of eight anywhere around the body that you want to take it. So you can take it upwards, to the side, behind you, down towards the floor. You can move the feet wide apart. So there's no right or wrong with this. The main thing to try and do is to take your hands into positions it wouldn't normally go into. We use our hands in front of us all the time. And that means that what's happening with this is figure of eights are very stimulating to the brain and particularly the cerebellum again, but a different zone of the cerebellum. It's the intermediate zone that's stimulated by figure of eights. And when we do these figure of eights, we are stimulating the cerebellum, but by moving the hands around us, we are increasing the mapping in the sensory cortex of the brain. And the better the maps in the brain, the better our movements are. So this is a lovely way of connecting with energy, moving through the space around us. Uh, it has been said, Don Eden says this, that figure of eights being done in the space around you helps to balance and heal any problems in the energy field around us or in the aura. And so it might be you instinctively feel that there's a corner like up here that needs a bit of extra attention and it might be there's a weakness in your energy field there. So just use your intuition and then we come back, bringing the feet in if you need to, to where we started. And then whatever speed you were going at, we tend to slow it right down, at least slow it down by 50%. If you've lost a bit of connection with the energy that you're sensing between the hands, you just reconnect with it. And the idea now is to see if you can intensify the energy that you're experiencing. And so what I tend to do is imagine a volume control on a stereo. And whatever I'm feeling, I'm trying to turn that volume right up to maximum. So I can really feel energy between the hands. And today I'm gonna to imagine that that energy is full of joy. So I've got this incredible feeling now between my hands. It's an energy of joy. And I'm gonna now bring that between the hands, draw it into my heart. And imagine that energy of joy flowing into the heart. And from the heart, it's gonna flow into the rest of my body. I'm gonna imagine that energy flowing up into my head, into my eyes, my face, my jaw. I'm gonna imagine it flowing down my arms, into my hands, down my body, through all the organs, down into the hips, down into my legs. And imagine that my whole body, every cell in my body is glowing with this energy of joy. And then imagine that that energy of joy is not just residing within me, but is projecting out of me, almost like I'm glowing in joy. To the extent that if someone was to just come into the room who didn't know me and maybe just see me, that somehow they would know that I am in a very joyful state. It's maybe in my posture, it's in my, the way that I'm breathing, it's in my facial expression, it's in the, just the energy that's coming from me. Just being in a state of joy and radiating. And then that brings us to the end of my favorite activation. <laughs>